Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern called Milky Way. This is a pattern that's been around for quite a while from Cozy Quilt Designs and I actually started it one time many years ago but never finished it. So I'm going to start again this time. It uses strips. I'm going to use these batik ones from Robert Kaufman called Graceful. So the darker ones are going to be in the background here. And then for the stars, we have options. I could use this light peach for the background. That will give us a look that's very much like the pattern, but I want to do it a little bit different. I'm going to use these darker colors for the stars, and then I want to use a light lavender for the background. I think those will look good on it. And then I can even incorporate some of these light strips into my background. So some will be out of yardage and some will be from the strips. The only other thing we need right now is an accent and you can barely see these stars, the little teeny stars there. So I'm going to use the peach, two colors of peach for those stars because I think these two colors will give me a lot more contrast compared to my strips and I think those will show up better then. Every strip, every jelly roll strip, is going to get cut exactly the same way. So I'm going to line up a couple of them here because I can cut them all at the same time and it will save me some time in measuring if I'm doing them in bulk. I can't give you the exact sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns are always very easy to follow. We're going to keep these pieces in groups with two big ones and one little one. So I'm going to go ahead and sort these all like that. There's all the pieces we need to make the quilt. We're going to be making quadrants. So we're going to be making one fourth of the patchwork for each block. And we're going to do that by taking these three matching pieces. Then we're going to use a background square and a background rectangle and one accent piece. I'm going to draw a line on the back side of all three of the squares, just a faint line from corner to corner. Each one of these rectangles is going to get a piece stitched on it. And you'll have to check the pattern so you know which way to turn each piece. This first one is going to get stitched like this. So I'm lining up the outer edges, and then I'm stitching right on that drawn line, or if anything, a little bit to that side of it, because we want to fold this open along our stitching, and once you fold it, everything should line up again. And I'm just gonna finger press it right now. The middle piece, this is going to go on the bottom, and it's going to go like this. Now it's going to face that way. And then the last piece, the accent is going to go like that. And we'll stitch that on. And then I'll show you what the very first quadrant looks like. So this is the basis of the whole quilt. Some of the blocks will have a dark accent like this and some will have a light accent, but we're basically going to do this for all the blocks. I'm gonna go ahead and iron each of these and trim them, but I'm not going to stitch them into a block. I'm just going to keep them all together. 
So here's a quadrant, the pieces for the quadrant with the light accent. Here's the pieces for the quadrant with the dark. And I forgot to tell you, some of the quadrants have no accents. And the pattern tells you exactly how many to make of each type. The next step is to take two of that style and two of that style and one center square to the sewing machine. We can actually lay all these pieces out for the whole block and then we can stitch it all together. So you can see that all four quadrants are the same and they just need to get turned so we can make our block. So we'll turn that one like that and we'll turn this one two times and then we'll just turn this one the opposite way and what happens is we're going to end up with a hole right in the middle and that's where that piece is going to go. So now we're just going to start putting pieces together with, the, we'll start with these three first. These pieces will get ironed to the seam allowances going that way. You don't have to remember this. The pattern has nice arrows that tell you which way to sew everything. And look how nice those matched up there. I used the sew and hope method here to get those matched up. I didn't even look, but when I stitched them, they came out perfectly matched there, so I'm very happy about that. The next step is to take these two pieces and we'll put them together. Now we'll put these three together by sewing this first. So I mentioned the sew and hope method, and that's when you're not checking ahead of time to see if your intersection is going to line up. You're just going to sew it and hope they match. This one isn't quite as perfect. I can make it a little bit better by stitching a teensy bit deeper here. If I only had thread, it would have worked. So making that seam just a skosh bigger makes those match quite a bit better. And now we'll add this piece here. And all we have to do next is put these together and make the bottom row. One last seam and when we're following the pressing guidelines that are in the pattern everything is nesting everything is facing opposite directions and it makes it very easy to get all those intersection nice and flat and everything perfectly square so there is the first block. So we've got that big star in the middle and we've got accents in all four corners. So I'm going to go ahead and make up the rest of these blocks and then all I have to do is make some blocks that have an accent just in two corners and a couple of blocks that have an accent just in one quarter, one corner. I do just want to mention there's another way you can make your blocks. You can make the quadrants ahead of time. And we will just turn these just like we did last time. And there's that hole in the middle where this block goes. And you can put these together, but you have to use the partial seam method. So that means 
you sew this just halfway and then you add this piece and then you add this piece and you add this piece and then you stitch up that final seam. So you can use that method if you prefer. I've got all the blocks done and so we have a variety of different kind of blocks. These with four accents, they form the middle of the quilt and so all I'm going to do is place them so that four of those that are the same color all come together and we've got a total of six of these that go right in the middle of the quilt. So all you have to do is spin it around till you get that accent right in the middle. Then we have some corner blocks. So this is a corner block that's gonna go right here because it's got that light accent. And this corner block is gonna go down here. The two far corner blocks are gonna go way up here and way over there. And now we have blocks that just have two accents. So this one is going to fit right here because it's got the matching colors there. And then we're just gonna alternate the rest of the way around. There, now we can see the big light stars pretty clearly and the little accents. So the accents alternate in color. The darker peach, the lighter peach, the darker peach, the lighter peach. And I may trade some of the blocks around because I'm not sure I want two here that are the same color. So you can trade some of the blocks. You can't trade all blocks, but the same kind of blocks you can trade. And that way I'll get the colors balanced a little bit. Actually, I just realized this is the correct block, but it does need to be turned as does this one. So when you trade them, sometimes you're gonna to have to turn them a little bit. And I do like the four purples there. I'm probably gonna move this one so I could turn it all the way around like that. That's a little better. The last thing we need to add are the borders. There's three borders that go around the quilt. So I've picked a purple batik to go first. Then I'm going to use the same fabric we used on the background. And I happen to have this variegated batik and it's exactly the right colors. So I'm gonna put this one all the way around last. So it's pretty easy to get everything finished up now. We've only got 20 blocks here. Put the borders on and then I'll get it loaded onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded on the machine and now we get to pick a thread color. There's usually a lot of colors that will look good, and this quilt is no exception. Any of these colors would work, but I think I'm going to want to go with the color that's going to show the least. This won't show at all in these big stars, and that's what I'm looking for. The peach, which is the color we used in the accent, it also won't show, and that's an option, but I don't think I will like it up in the border area quite as much. Now, if you wanted the quilting to show, that's gonna show a lot. Darker purple, show a little bit. That one blends pretty well also, but I think this is going to be the most muted, so I'm gonna go with that one. For the quilting pattern, I'm using one called Calm Waters. I like the effect like this. It's very abstract and it looks like water but it also looks a little bit like outer space. And since our quilt is called Milky Way, that should look really good. got the Milky Way quilt all finished and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I like the way that these little accent stars are a little more prominent in my quilt. I could see that you also could have used a really dark purple for this or a really dark blue. It would have been more muted and it would have given it a different look. We still see these nice big light stars popping up all over everywhere 
and those look really good. The quilting, it's very understated and I like the way it's abstract. It looks great on our ombre border here. And I mirrored the same binding that I used on the inside border. And then I used that also on the back side. And you can see the quilting on that as well. It turned out 60 by 70 and it's a nice throw size. And I would suggest when you make your blocks that you make those four piece quadrants, three piece quadrants and stick that middle square in using the partial seam method. I tried that for the rest of my blocks and I think it went a lot faster. Either way, either method will work, but I think making them like that is just quicker. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed seeing us make the Milky Way quilt. Now at the end of every video, we'd like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a little wall hanging quilt from a collection from Northcott called Beecroft. I haven't seen any bees yet this spring. I've seen some ants, but spring will come. We will get our flowers blooming. So this is a king's crown pattern, and we do have a video that shows you how to make this, but today you can win it. It's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address, and you might be the lucky winner. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.